turn the game off because it's giving a little background noise. All right. So, well, let, let's get started, everybody. This is the content me, my guild, and my entire community are looking forward to for Sea of Thieves 2024. Let's jump into it. I will be pausing the video from time to time so that both the chat and us can discuss what the upcoming stuff is going to be, all right? Come to the Sea of Thieves 2024 preview event, where we're going to give you your first look at some of the exciting features coming hey, to Sea of Thieves this year. That makes it kind of hard for me to... We're going to share information around what's coming in season. 12 and 13 as well as even further into the future with a sneak peek behind the curtain on season 14. So grab a grog and get ready for adventure as we reveal some of the incredible bounty of features headed to Sea of Thieves in 2024. Sea of Thieves is a pirate sandbox adventure game where players create those stories together. And in the world of Sea of Thieves, there are tools and items that may seem simple on the surface, but when they're in the hands of real players who are playing in their own way and bringing their creativity, it really showcases that the sandbox is more than the sum of its parts as it creates these memorable stories. Yeah, and those real players are talking about, that's us, that's us guys. It might be smug yeah, to say, but I'm pirates. saying it. That's us. <laughs> That's all of us here. Let's go. This year, in we're 2024, Air Focus mm -hmm. is on giving you more tools, more possibilities. And with that freedom out on the waves, give you the possibility to have these amazing moments and really changing up the core moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of the sandbox. Looking forward to that, more toys. The kind of main aims for season 12 are about mixing up the meta and how players enjoy all of the different aspects of Sea of Thieves. So as part of season 12, we're going to be adding two new weapons and three new tools for players to use. An area we haven't really delved into since launch is adding new weapons to the game. New weapons that give you new tactical choices and strategies out there on your adventures. So in season 12, we're going to be adding the double barrel pistol and throwing knives. The double barrel flintlock is a new yeah, type of pistol nice. weapon where you can fire two guys, shots yeah, individually before nice. you need to reload, or you can charge them together and release them at once for a more powerful shot. We wanted to kind of create this new weapon archetype that's a bit shorter range, but a faster fire rate, but perhaps not as powerful or damaging as, as the flintlock pistol. But then it has those kind of blunderbuss-like qualities as well, where you can do the charge shot to release two pellets at the same time. That is really Accompanying powerful. that double barrel. All right, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, If do you guys think that this may replace the blunderbuss? Yeah, your nay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I got an immediate maybe. yes. I got an immediate mm -hmm. yes from everybody here. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Maybe. Who you don't think so? I mean, it's two, it's two shots. It, it seems more versatile than the blunderbuss. I mean, honestly, I think the loadout I'll be doing in the next update would be the sword and daggers. Also, if you take a look at the bottom right of the screen, there's six ammo shots instead of five. So I'm assuming... Yeah. I'm assuming that may either be exclusive for this gun or they're, they are in also increasing the ammo cap for all the weapons, which would be great. That would, that would be cool. But if this one was exclusively six shots, I wouldn't be mad, mainly because of the fact that you can either shoot it one, two, or you could do a big one. So, which means you get three big shots or, or two individual, or like six individual shots. So, I, I get that. But moving on. Flintlock with another weapon like the Cutlass, for example, for a finishing blow can lead to a fast time to kill for a player to be able to quickly take down a target. Fights do not look like that in the game. <laughs> A lot more season 12 also not. brings in the um, throwing knives as a weapon now these like can be used as a melee item they have a light and a heavy melee action but they can also be thrown and used at range as well yeah you can knives. use it to kind of like stab players with like a quick attack but that doesn't do much damage or you can charge it to like pull it into this kind of more dangerous stabbing motion and uh, that will slow the player's movement down and give this like really high damage attack for if you like sneak up behind players 
And then finally, it has the ability to kind of flip the knife over, catch it, and then throw it at distance against players, which, that, again, kind of feels like a trick shot, right and they'll do a lot of damage as well. When you throw a throwing knife, and yeah. if you miss, you can actually go in the world, and it'll stick into any of the geometry, and you can just pull it out, and then it'll replenish your ammo. So I think, personally, for me, this is really good, because sometimes I miss, as I'm sure some of us do. Yeah, uh, so you can then just go ahead and pick it up again. So you get these wonderful moments where a pirate might throw a knife at you, but then you can retrieve that knife and throw it back to them. So, okay. First off, we we've all been on the deck. We've all been in the fights. We've we've all boarded. We've all done this stuff. And I love how they're trying to show what could be done with this thing. But we all know just watching these weapons, it's like this is not how it's gonna go down. This I'll tell you what's gonna go down. It's gonna be faster for one thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> and we're we're well, gonna be gonna running. Be... And if any of us at I'm all going to could see so a knife within a split second, grab it, turn, and then chuck it, that's a that's a skill thing, right? Fuck me. I don't see that happening that slowly like i i could potentially see that happening maybe with new players yeah but <laughs> yeah no. with new players because the new players gonna be standing still while while me or evans or caboose or fucking hayden's especially hayden's because hayden's has been getting his hourglass pvp going on here um we're they're gonna sell the knife we're gonna see i'll be like oh sh have this back sh chuck it <laughs> but fucking like <laughs> An, a vet, right, like, right for example, if I'm 1v1ing Evans, I don't see Evans standing still after I throw my knife I at him. I never stand still in a, in a combat That's... fight. But, hell man. And my intentions are for you not to see me in the first place, so being able to sneak up to someone and stab them would be quite nice. I agree, man. Great. So it'll really mix up the kind of combat scenarios you can expect out in the world and when boarding other ships. There are three new tools in Season 12. The Wind Caller, the Scatter Shot and the Bone Caller. With the Scatter Shot, the way that it's different to a standard cannonball oh, yeah, is it's a collection of four cannonballs, but they're much smaller. They have a much shorter falloff like range caller, and a really widespread, like allowing you to hit a target with multiple projectiles at the same time. And it does really small amounts of damage to the ship, just like a level one size hole. So like really yeah, quick for players to repair, but it can kind of overwhelm mm -hmm. a crew quite quickly. Basically, if you get up close with the scatter shot and you can get a few onto your enemy, they're going to have a lot of holes and they're going to have a pretty bad time. What it will do is really eat up an opponent's resources. They'd need to use more wood to repair the many holes that the scatter shot puts into the hole. I'll tell you right now, the bilge roll will never be more important than because of this one weapon addition. Yep. The, if you got a shit, and we've said this before, you get a shit bilge in any fight, you're dead, but the bilge roll is going to get so much more respect right now because, you know, we got people exactly. uh, ha uh, calling out to you, Troy, who are like, oh, I don't want to be bilge. It's so boring. Well, your job's oh. just going to get more exciting now. Hold on. <laughs> Here, here's some, here's some information. Here's some interesting information from me. Yes. On the sloop, you can now bucket through that grate in the middle of it. More. They somehow fixed the hitbox for it. I don't know when. But oh they my god, when the hell they do that? Because every time I ever did I don't it. Know. <laughs> yeah, but now it's more reliable to do so. That's good. Yeah, it's super easy now. It's so, so you can sit in the middle of the boat and stay out <laughs> cannon fire. Yeah, I've tried to do that in an hourglass fight, and I just got juggled around like a ping pong ball. I believe it. Just imagine, like, all four cannons with those scatter shots, right? We get up close personal, and we just shotgun the hell out of this thing. It'd be so great. It'd be so great. Hey, Bacon, thanks for joining us, bro. You watching the video, too? Here, let's look at the rest of the content. So the bone caller is an awesome new throwable that, that players side, can right? wield and they can throw that on the floor and when it smashes all these kind of bones come out and then skeletons spawn around the player in allegiance to them and they'll actually Friends. fight beside the player against enemy players and enemy AI. Now you might not be going straight for just a normal cannonball or a, or a chain shot, you might in fact go straight for the bone caller so you can have some skellies that are on your side on that ship sort of messing things up for that crew. You could use fire to fight fire so if somebody 
and shoots a bone caller across the sea at your ship and they spawn in. If you have your own bone caller. What, what was that? Oh, wait. You have uh, two of the ships use the sky shots and then two, two of the cannons use the bone caller. So they're getting a whole bunch of holes and skeletons on their ship at the same time. Oh my god. I'll, I'll tell really you right now, skele um, we, now, we don't know if there's a number limit. So we don't know, say for example, we each shoot a bone crawler and then like three skeletons spawn and then someone shoots another one, three more skeletons spawn. We don't know. But could you imagine if that is the case, that means... <laughs> Four cannons, you're shooting 12 skeletons every time. Or if it's like, oh, you just spawned some, you could shoot another one, it wouldn't do anything. That's freaking crazy. It, I mean, it may be a limit per person that throws like it. Time limit. Oh, exactly. So it be, there might be a time limit. There might be a time limit. Uh, or per person that throws it. Like, one person can have three, another can have three, and another can have three. And that's your limit is per person. Ooh, that's but, another way yeah we don't we can't yeah, because we don't know how some of these new tools are going to be like it's like because we know cannonballs and chain shots have their own loadout so does that mean the scatter shot's gonna have its own loadout too and then is this thing gonna i'm assuming this new bomb is just gonna take the place of your normal blunder bomb bacon says this is to fix the wood problem and the cannon spam i mean you're not wrong <laughs> but my my thought process is from a role play perspective, I like to think of it as the Reapers are getting a lot of love. Like we we oh yeah we are getting a lot of love this year. Like Flameheart's oh, just yeah. like Trust here guys, me. here's not only a new ship, here's also some new toys. Now you can summon more skeletons to fight. So think about it, guys, we could just roll skeleton curses and everything, and go out there, throw these bombs and invade, and set, fuck, we don't even need a border. I mean, don't get me wrong. The border is going to be more effective than those skeleton dudes, but it's yeah, still something. Here's the thing. Boarding is going to be easier than ever with that harpoon gun. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's going to be so much. It's going to be harder to repel. It's going to be harder to repel boarding now. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Bacon says role play <laughs> is going to go hard. Oh, my God. It, it's going to go so hard. All right. Let, let's let them show the next piece. Well, you could throw that down on the deck and have your own skellies go and fight those uh, to take them out for you so that you don't have to. I mostly play Repel solo orders. and to be able to spawn literally anything that is friendly to my cause while I'm playing is a massive uh, positive. So I'm kind of looking forward to that and I'm sure that other players will find ways to make use of it as well. Boss fights, right? The Windcaller is a new horn-shaped shell that players can blow into to summon the power of the winds. So imagine the scenario that you're... I just want to say this, no more will we have to ever worry about fucking being in the wind and chasing people yeah, down is runners. a thing of the, running is going to be like the sloop needs a wind crawler. I uh, like, we need to dedicate time to just get this thing because it's, it's a must now because we run galleons most of the time. It's a must have. It's an yeah. absolute must have. Especially when we're chasing on that, people. What? My curiosity on that. What will happen? Because it says it's supposed to get the last speed. What will happen if you have one person on each sail using the wind caller? One person to sail. Uh, good question. Will it be fa faster, or will it be the same as one using it? I like the fact that I can make a rowboat, a speedboat. <laughs> or you can, oh my or you god! Can right. Push yourself or the. <laughs> Your yeah, way. like going to all, be all the stuff we're about to get from heading thing fully is into the insane. wind, and you're either chasing someone or you're trying to get away from someone. I mean, now you can use this tool wind, to blow wind, wind goal, into your sails and go even beyond full billow in speed. Players can also use fucking, it to kind of knock players back off their ship fucking, or on land, so they can kind of target a player, blow into the wind collar, and it will throw them back into the air. You can use it as a means of propulsion for yourself in the water, but also for uh, rowing boats. So you can either use it while you're in the water swimming so and you'll blast along like a really fast it. water right. boatman, or you can stand on a rowing boat and blast it out of the back I like a, a speedboat, basically. You can put out fires and you can do it quickly. Mm. So you can just essentially walk around your entire ship is caught on fire and just put out all the fires as you walk around. And they can Okay, now the fire thing is going to be a godsend. How many right. times... Have oh. we just been like, oh, we got firebombs everywhere? I have a bit of a story considering fire. 
the, you can tell us that here in a minute, but goddamn, we, we needed this wing crawler this for that alone. For that alone. You can even use it to, like, stop their Four fall damage. Like, say you're falling a great distance and you use the wing crawler below you, like, cushioning your fall, so you, like, land safely as well. There is, like... You just sat there and watched? Yep. I sat there and watched. Wow. I watched like a, a finite charge for how long the wind caller can last burn. for. So you have to use it wisely. Oh. Hey D, what up? Good to see you. What's up? We are watching the new content we're going to be getting in uh, this coming year. So I'm glad you're here now because you can see this new stuff. We're actually now just showing off like the wind crawler, the, uh, the, new, the new bomb we got along with the new cannonball weapon. Cool. I've done some solo PVPs in one three in a row. I'm getting used to PVP. Sounds off. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you're getting used to some PVP, Brody. Are you joining the queue for Friday? Uh, and has anybody seen Rich yet? I, I put a message out to him on the Discord. I have not uh, uh, He might I, be... No. I got off earlier. I think he took a nap and he hasn't woken up yet. Well, he's still got a little time. <laughs> uh, no, my end stream shenanigan... Oh yes, Bacon's like no. Now, now no one can set fire to the Ares because I'm just gonna blow it out. <laughs> are we? Are you doing something tonight? Yes, I am. Uh, we're gonna be sailing out here once we're done with this because uh, this just dropped today, and I wanted to show it off to both, uh, not just the crew, but also to the community because I'm excited for the new stuff we're getting. So season 12 also introduces zip lines onto several of the islands around Sea of Thieves. Thank so God. you may have seen these as they debuted in the Monkey Island Tall Tales. And they're a really fun and exhilarating way to traverse. Easy so it's guess. really cool to be able to bring those to the wider Sea of Thieves world. So we've been looking across all the islands of the Sea of Thieves and looking at the most Monkey ideal places to kind of mix here. up the traversal opportunities uh, within all of the islands to add these zip lines across them. So we've added oh, cool. zip lines to like the outpost to get down to your ship quickly. We've added them to the skeleton forts that allow you to kind of zip line between two positions to kind of escape the skeletons or get close to them when they first spawn. Or just general kind of zip lines across the islands for like fast traversal and moving yeah, chests around the islands quickly. For example, on Ancient Spire Outpost now, you've got to clunk down some cliffs in order to get to your ship. Now I mean, you'll be able to just go and get on the zip line and go flying kind of all the way down yeah, to the jetty next to your ship. Island, so so alongside deep. adding completely mm -hmm. brand new tools to the Sea of Thieves sandbox, there's also the opportunity agree, for us to go back and add completely brand new functionality to existing tools. So another cool new feature that we're adding for Season 12 is the ability to balance on harpoon lines. So you can shoot that harpoon line at another ship or another island and then jump onto it and then like balance across depending on the angle that we've needed like. this forever we have needed this forever i'm just saying i'm gonna be a fucking menace with that feature <laughs> no dude megalodons every time we harpoon megalodons now we're gonna like i want to jump on that shit and like get on his ass in which you fire the harpoon <laughs> it'll either be like too steep to climb up it but if you're on the other end you, you can actually jump on the harpoon line and like slide down it really quickly back to your ship we're really confident this will lead to some really inventive player boarding tactics out there in the sandbox as well as giving you new ways to traverse the islands with all this that we're adding in season 12 it gives players more opportunities to create those stories as we're really enriching the sandbox of every session so we're always really excited to add new tools and mechanics to Sea of Thieves, but we're always mindful that we want to make sure that the game's health is in a really good update. position as well, that the integrity of Sea of Thieves is there for our players. And since we're adding new weapons into Sea of Thieves, we're very mindful that we want to ensure that the hit registration in our game is as rock solid as it can be. And this is a, an ongoing thing for us as a development team. We're constantly putting time and effort into this area to try and make it as robust as possible. In the past, we've borrowed time oh, okay. from... So, so to answer your question, D, um, this is season 12. This part, anyway, is season 12 that we've been watching. And we will get this in, what, 13 days, boys? So. Oh, yeah. Because that, that's when the Battle Pass ends, and I use that term very loosely, because they haven't I made an official fucking... announcement. He's like, I can't fucking what? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, we know this part here is all about the cheating system, which we know is yeah. meh. 
so we we, we, we know they're part. working on it and everything so we can honestly skip that we need to get to the juicy well, stuff the, the very juicy oh, stuff. No, 13 no. i'm excited for 13. for 13. for uh season 13. okay here we go wait wait season 13 comes out at 4 13. no i said i'm excited about season 13. Oh yes, yes. Season thirteen is is my season. It's absolutely my season. All right, boys. Here we go. We're we're now getting into the content we're gonna get for season yes. thirteen. This mm, this is the oh. cream of the crop right here for me anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. Me too. I, I, I you know I, we're gonna be menaces. I, I, oh, we're this. gonna be we're gonna be the bad. We're gonna be the. Here we go. So Captain Flameheart has been a staple and important character of Sea of Thieves for many years, appearing in her novels and appearing in her many tall tales and expanded fiction. With season 13, this brings the return of Captain Flameheart the to the Sea heaven? of Thieves. As Flameheart has been resurrected, so has his Burning Blade ship, and it's back in more monstrous and terrifying form than ever before. So we've reimagined it for season 13, and it looks incredible. Yeah, it almost looks like an, a living entity itself. So traditionally, world events have been at set locations throughout the world. The Burning Blade is a little different. The Burning Blade is a ship, and therefore moves around the world. But the twist is, when you've defeated the ship, you have the option to board it and pledge yourself and your crew to Flameheart, enter into his service, and become the crew of the Burning Blade. We're all gonna do that. I'm just saying that right now. We're all doing oh, this. Absolutely. There is no, we sink that ship. There is, we we attack it, and we board it, and we pledge to it. There is no if, ands, like, or buts about it. We're just doing this. I like, yeah, I like the whole course. idea that you become the world event. Exactly. Come after we, you. we will become the world event. Exactly. This is gonna be great essentially becoming a player-created world event yourselves. So obviously we have to go in big with this one. At a base, it is larger and more formidable than any ship we've seen on the waves. This ship has 10 cannons. It has a statue room dedicated to <laughs> Flameheart at the back. It has a balcony where Flameheart likes to take in the view every morning with his coffee. And most importantly, it's got a massive flamethrower at the front. Players will be able to pull a lever on their ship and fire two massive balls of fire out the front of their ship, which yeah, is really that. interesting because we've never actually had an offensive weapon that's frontal facing before. So I think this, this thing looks like a sound. fucking dragon head. He opens his mouth, and then we're just gonna do a game yeah. of Thrones of it. Dracarys. It, interesting Boom. detail <laughs> that I noticed when watching this: the noise that the projectile makes is the same as the Ashen Lord projectile. So I assume it might be the same kind of projectile. Probably, probably. Um, uh, D says Kelsink, main protagonist of Sea of Thieves. That ship is overpowered. It's meant to be. It's it's bigger. Then I believe the galleon. It's basically the man of war we've we've always wanted. Yeah, there's gonna be ten cannons. They yeah, said. there's gonna be ten cannons on this thing, and it's gonna be crewed by not just players, but other NPC skeletons too. That's it's fucking great. This is gonna create some really interesting yeah, dynamic naval combat situations. So once you take over the Burning Blade, you are on this really powerful warship and you have a skeleton crew helping you as well. So even smaller crews have every chance of crewing the Burning Blade because the skeletons will come to your aid. So you could have skeletons repairing while you're on the cannons firing at enemies which is excellent. But it's not just about sailing around the world, which of course you can do. It's about completing orders in service Correct. of Captain Flameheart. So around the world, there'll be numerous skeleton camps. You'll notice the Reapers have been conducting excavations on yeah. the surface, and they've been dragging up all sorts of ancient artifacts and ancient secrets from below the surface. Underground, there's basically a chamber with a prism that the players can control to draw constellations on the ceiling in order to help the ritual come to completion and get that knowledge of the ancients. Each of these temples contains the secrets of the ancient, secrets that Flameheart wants above anything else. And as part of taking control of the ship, you'll be able to sail around the world, visit these ancient temples deep below these skeleton camps, engaging new puzzle gameplay, discover treasures. But what you're really after is the Orb of Secrets, a new treasure artifact 
that Flameheart wants. Collecting these secrets will add tribute to the Burning Blade ship. Could you imagine the quote-unquote tribute to the Burning Blade was like, oh, you just put this on here, now you have an, another weapon for the ship. I'd be like, the right. ship looks overpowered. It's bigger than a Galleon. It has more <laughs> guns than a Galleon. It has more crew members than a Galleon. Not just player crew, NPC crew members. It's like overpowered as fuck. And it's like, could you imagine if it's like you've got this ore from this from one fort and then you've got now this, this mortar strike or something from the back of the ship that, that I just can't. I just can't. Oh yeah, swabbies, they're they're gone. They're just gone. They're fucked. They're, there's, Goodbye. They're just gone. I can't help to say it, but they're just going to be gone. Um, <laughs> now, I don't know if they them. are adding additional islands, hence why these little new skeleton outposts or reaper outposts are out there whatever they're called or if they are going on existing islands that are already on on the game itself and they're just building on top of them so i don't know we're not going to know that until it comes out you'll make the whole lobby quit if, i mean we, we kind of do that already but it's this is just more so <laughs> it's just overkill at this point this is straight overkill the more tribute Layer. that you collect, the more value <laughs> will be aboard the Burning Blade. But you will lose the Burning Blade if it sinks or when you choose to go and cash that tribute into Flameheart. So it's really up to you how long you think you can hold on to it with that risk reward because everybody in the world is going to be coming for you. They're going to know you're in there and know you've got high value. So it really becomes this dynamic player created world event with players versus players in the sandbox. I mean, that, so that, even though you can visit these skeleton and camps mm -hmm. while in control of the Burning Blade, it's not only tightly wedded to that new gameplay, players can also visit them anytime in their adventures. Oh, nice so should boost. players visit these skeleton camps when they're not the crew of the Burning Blade, the skeletons won't be too happy that you've found a way inside these camps and you'll be engaging in a combat-focused encounter to discover its secrets. What's really exciting about Season 13 is the interplay of the features and the way that they'll bring really players together to and combine to create new stories. Days. And whether you're the crew of the Burning Blade who wants to protect it or everyone else yeah, who no, wants she, to she take it down and steal that value, everything in Season yeah, 13 will bring really you coming. together. Oh, it's... I'm sorry, I don't even care what's happening with Season 14, okay? That, to me, was like the, the cream of the crop there. Season 14, this is the harpoon gun. Well, no, that the harpoon gun is what they show off, but but they uh, but they talk about more that's coming for season. F I think I think the burning blade's coming for season fourteen, season thirteen. No, no, so no, towards no, the end of the year, we have the season blade. fourteen, and while it's oh, very early for us to better. talk about, yes, we wanted to share mm. some of their okay. thinking here because it is totally aligned with this vision for what twenty twenty four can be. This laser focus on the sandbox and mechanics that add to the variety of stories you can encounter in Sea of Thieves. Internally, we're referring to season 14 as Pirates of Mischief. Sea of Thieves has always had this playful, mischievous and funny sense of humour. And with season 14, we're expanding on that. The two main areas that we're exploring are new ways to stealth and new ways to cause mischief in the world. So I think a real aspect of the Sea of Thieves experience that we haven't dive too deep into previously is the Two idea of being a stealthy like. pirate. Yeah, so when you think about stealth in Sea of Thieves and enhancing that, imagine being able to crouch and move around the world silently or the ability to hang off the side of an enemy ship. When we were having these initial conversations about season 14, the first thing I thought of was the cardboard boxes in Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Could we allow players to climb into chests and if they choose, they can actually scuttle around with oh, their little yeah. legs out the bottom. Like and also, if they choose to, you know, keep the ruse up, could other players come along and pick them up like a normal loot chest or treasure chest or whatever and take it onto their ship? So another cool thing that we've been working on is, is the blow dart, which is another new weapon that players can wield <laughs> from the armory and use that to kind of sneak aboard enemy ships and fire kind of these custom 
darts into players that will do different effects. So imagine a blow dart that tracks whatever it sticks to, whether that's a ship, a chest, an item, a player. Ones that could potentially like lure skeletons to like a specific position so you can throw a firebomb in there or, you know, explode a gunpowder keg or darts that can trigger specific sound effects, which is quite evil and cunning where you could board an enemy ship and shoot the capstan and it sounds like it's dropping or shoot the ladders and it sounds like someone's climbing up them. And then thinking about some of the ways that we want to add more mischief to the world, one of these is the idea of traps. So much like the kind traps. of blunder bombs Hell or fire yeah, bombs, we've been thinking about them being this kind of throwable trap that players can kind of throw into the world. Think of it like a, like a spring trap that players can place on the islands to trap skeletons on a bounty or on a fort or they could place it at the top of their ladders to Spring prevent chair, players from boarding their ships days. and get caught in this trap. Mm. Along with these, we're also bringing a really exciting new tool, and Jeff it's the grapple gun, which is a dual purpose uh, rifle. So, so it allows you to tra traverse the environment much quicker because you're able to grapple yourself up to a ledge, for example, but you can also harpoon items and other players in. So some of the new cool uses we've seen from the grapple gun in our early play tests are you know, players firing themselves out of the cannon towards another ship to try and board them and perhaps overcooking it and then using the grapple gun to fire it at the deck and propel themselves down onto it. Or jumping off their ship to like an oncoming ship and then using the grapple gun that to kind of so grapple up good. and onto their ship <laughs> so that they can board them and, and drop their anchor or have a fight with People them. To make so sure that uh, the <laughs> grapple gun is balanced, it does have ammunition. You'll have arrowheads, and these essentially break off when you successfully use the grapple gun, meaning you can't continuously keep grappling. There is a skill to using the gun successfully and accurately and efficiently. So when we think about 2024, we really think about getting to the very heart of what makes Sea of Thieves great. That is your stories powered by that design philosophy of tools, not rules. Season 12, 13 and 14 are fully tools. exploring that, giving you new options, new I'm tools and fundamentally to new more, possibilities more that make this game unique things. and special. I think when you look at the year ahead for Sea of Thieves, our plans for Season 12, Season 13 and Season 14, it's kind of making the shift away from these big kind of systemic changes to Sea of Thieves and returning back to the core of what makes Sea of Thieves so special, the heart of Sea of Thieves about giving players new tools to create new stories out there in the world. We're ultimately shaking up the meta, giving players new tools to learn and master. And I can't wait to see what combinations players start settling on before we shake it back up again. While everything that you're seeing today is still work in progress and possibly subject to change in some ways, we will be giving more insights onto how these things are developing as we come closer to launch for each of them. With the richness of all these new seasons and of course PlayStation Pirates joining us as well, it is such an exciting year for Sea of Thieves in 2024. More than Thank ever. you for joining us for the Sea of Thieves oh, 2024 man, preview yeah. event. Very, we hope we've enjoyed this sneak peek at what's very, coming throughout the rest of the year. There's still a lot more to reveal for these seasons, happen. so keep an eye on the horizon as we'll have more to share closer to each season's launch. For more information and to keep up to date with what's new in Sea of Thieves, check out our social channels. So until our paths cross again, happy sailing and we'll see you on the seas. And there's one last bit of information, everybody, for all of you who want a new pet.